Welcome back to InfoLife TV for the week that was, a compilation of our top stories of the week. On Monday, Prime Minister Ehud Olmert met Palestinian Authority Chairman Mahmoud Abbas for the first summit in seven years in Palestinian territory. The two discussed setting up a framework for final status negotiations ahead of November's planned peace summit in Washington, D.C. On Sunday, thousands of Holocaust survivors and their families marched in the March of the Living from the Knesset to the Prime Minister's office in protest of the meager $20 monthly stipend allotted to Holocaust survivors by the Israeli government. According to senior political sources in Jerusalem, Hamas and Israel have renewed contacts over the fate of abducted Israeli soldier Gilad Shalit through third-party Egyptian mediation. For the first time in seven years, an Israeli prime minister arrived in the Palestinian Authority town of Jericho on Monday afternoon for talks with Palestinian President Abbas in an attempt to establish a framework for future negotiations for a final peace agreement ahead of the upcoming U.S.-sponsored peace summit scheduled for November. Prime Minister Olmert discussed substantive issues, agreed to continue to hold such meetings on a regular basis, and expressed hope that the talks would lead to negotiations on the creation of a Palestinian state alongside Israel. However, with Hamas still in complete control of the Gaza Strip and Olmert's popularity at an all-time low, it remains to be seen to what degree the two leaders will be able to make any concrete progress in solving outstanding problems. The IDF on Wednesday published the final list of the 142 recipients of citations and medals of honor for their role in the Second Lebanon War. The IDF has come under criticism for the large number of citations, which bereaved parents, analysts, and high-ranking officers have said is a media spin to cover up the faulty management of the war. Some bereaved parents even claim that the lives of some who received medals posthumously could have been saved had the war been run correctly. Thousands of Holocaust survivors and family members, along with politicians, youth activists, and students, marched on Sunday from the Knesset to the Prime Minister's office in what they called the March of the Living, in protest of the meager $20 monthly stipend granted to Holocaust survivors by the government. President Shimon Peres and opposition leader Benjamin Netanyahu called on the government Sunday to find a speedy resolution to the problem of the stipends, and Prime Minister Olmert criticized the organizers of the march and said they were politically motivated. Olmert did meet with representatives of Holocaust survivors on Wednesday and agreed to attempt to reach a final settlement of the stipend issue within 10 days. According to a senior Israeli political source, Israel and Hamas have renewed negotiations over the release of abducted Israeli soldier Gilad Shalit through Egyptian mediation after all contacts were suspended following the Hamas takeover of the Gaza Strip in June. Talks resumed a week ago, and the issue is reported to have come up at the Monday summit between PA President Mahmoud Abbas and Prime Minister Olmert. Israeli sources have said Hamas has expressed frustration with the recent release of mostly Fatah-affiliated Palestinian security prisoners, and it is unclear how much influence Chairman Abbas can have on Hamas over the Shalit issue, as his forces no longer control the Gaza Strip. The leading indices of the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange suffered substantial drops, which began last week due to the crisis in the U.S. high-risk mortgage market and similar drops in Asian and European markets and Wall Street. Trading at the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange was favorable Monday, and the leading indices registered gains on Wednesday. The shekel gained against the dollar, closing at 4.278 on Thursday. Thank you for joining us at InfoLive TV for the week that was... Shalom from Jerusalem and have a pleasant weekend.